Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India come to the lecture 2 of this module 3 where we will elaborate mostly on the types of glass which you as architects should know. So, we will mostly concentrate on the types of glass, their special properties and their particular use. So, that you can recommend proper glass wherever you are going for some particular or some special use. Most, more or less we will see the use of plate glass, sheet glass or maybe float glass which we had discussed or which we had closed by giving the list in the lecture 1. But we require particular types of glass mostly when we are going for say special uses of glass. You have a complete glass facade an entire building is covered with glass. You have shopping malls, the entry is totally glass. In an office interior, maybe partition walls are made of glass. In a restaurant, you want to create some partition between the sitting tables, that can be glass. So, will you be using the same glass everywhere? So, let us see what are the different types of glass and obviously how are they made, what are their particular speciality and their use. So, we start with the sheet glass. Sheet glass is the most common domestic use like windows made by blowing glass. If you remember blowing glass, it is blown into thin sheets and that can be as thin as 2 to 6 millimeter. It is glossy it is it may have wavy surfaces because it may not be uniformly cooled. So, some distortion in vision as I was telling in the first lecture there may be some distortion in the vision you may not see correctly a person who is outside uh, outside a glass which is sheet glass. So, this waviness may be there in case of sheet glass. Sometimes due to blowing some air bubbles may remain entrapped in this glass and you can see the maximum sheet size are not so large. It is 1.6 meter cross 2.2 meters. So, almost 5 feet by 7 feet. This glass needs polishing and you can see once it breaks, it can shatter into small pieces and it can have edges, sharp ends which can be very dangerous. We have plate glass which is little superior quality than sheet glass and sheet sizes as you see are larger 3.5 meters cross 4.5 meters and these are not blown out rather these are coming out or rolled out as sheets. As because they are gradually rolled out no waviness is being seen and they can be bent to different shapes if ordered. Let us see how it is being made. So, this is how the rolling operation is taking place. You can see the forming rolls on these two sides. This gap actually controls the thickness. This gap actually controls the thickness. You can see these two are the forming rolls which help the roll help the sheet to form. And here there are support rollers multiple numbers which gives allows the roll to move the glass sheet to move and gradually when it is moving it is getting cooled. Now here you see it is molten glass and this molten glass is full to the brim which is actually as if it is coming out and forming this sheet. So, here you can limit the sheet size up to 4.5 meters and there is no waviness formed. So, these support rolls are very gradually moving 
and the sheet is getting cooler and cooler and cooler and it is passing. If you need to bend it, you can bend it as per desired order into by placing it into a given desired shape and it should be in its still in its unset form. After this, we have the float glass. Scientist Pilkington actually invented this. So, what is the speciality between a plate glass and a float glass? See, here it is the same molten glass you can see here, which when pass on top of molten tin. Tin has very high specific gravity. Tin is a low melting point metal which has high specific gravity. As I told you glass has a specific gravity of 2.5. So, it is floating on top of tin which is in its molten form. So, gradually this sheet is coming out again on top of support rolls and gradually it is moving. So, here it gets a little cool and it is totally controlled environment and this sheet glass, this float glass is coming out. This is actually called Pilkington glass and as it floats over tin, it is called float glass. And the speciality is, is here, it can be obtained in sizes of 50 meters long and 3 to 4 meters wide. So, these rollers carry it and when it is at 600 degree centigrade, they gradually set and you can allow it to cool down. This is higher in quality than both the other glasses that is sheet glass and plate glass. This has no, this kind of glass do not require any polishing. You can get thickness 6 millimeter and above they are quite rigid, they have almost little higher strength than that of float glass than higher strength than that of plate glass. They can be shaped bent as ordered when it is being manufactured. So, you can go for glass furniture, insulated glass glazing in windows and doors. So, this kind of glass can be applied in specific areas like sho sho shop shelves, shop tabletops. So, these float glass is quite rigid, they can take load to some extent and they are better than both sheet glass and plate glass. Let us see another kind of glass which is called wired glass. When in the stage of formation as we saw here, when it is at 600 degree centigrade, when it is gradually cooling down, if you can put in a mesh, wire mesh of iron inside it, that means you are impregnating a wire mesh inside the glass when it is at around 600 degree centigrade, it is not totally set it reinforces the glass and it is called wired glass. What is the beauty of it? When it cracks as you had seen the, seen the other glasses, they shatter into sharp wedge like pieces. Here the pieces are hold together because of the wire mesh. Even if it falls, it does not have some sharp, it does not have sharp edges. So, these are preferred in high light, in skylight windows, high level windows, atriums, industrial buildings which are not really accessible all the time. So, even if it breaks due to some reason, due to some storm wind, gusty wind, even if it breaks, it would not shatter like the other ones. This reinforcement gives it holds it together. You can see as these reinforcement wires are some half a millimeter diameter bars, the thickness of the glass is around 5 to 7 millimeters to accommodate such wires. So, these thicknesses are little heavier too. 
Now coming to frosted glass, you may also find it in the market as ground glass, translucent glass, sometimes patterned glass. So this is obtained by sand blasting or acid etching on plate glass. So sand blasting, what is sand blasting? High velocity fine particle sand are hit on the surface of the glass. So if you have the glass surface and sand particles are hitting it, it will actually eat away some portion of the glass which will give it a obscure look. So it will be losing its shine, it will become translucent, its light falling on it will refract. So it will not allow the entire light to pass, you will not see what is behind, behind you. So it will give you some semi opacity to it. So you can see some images behind, but you cannot see the exactly who it is. So this can provide visual privacy at the same time maintaining some formal environment, offices, office interiors. Maybe when the manager's room at the eye level it is obscure glass, so that the manager is seen from outside whether he is in or out, but there is no eye contact. So the manager is working, he is not distracted by people moving around, but at the same time it is giving him a visual privacy at the same time one can understand whether someone is in or not, inside or not. Restaurants, interior partitions, washroom glasses, obviously to maintain privacy you can have such kind of obscure glass or translucent glass or ground glass or frosted glass. So these are nothing but plate glass which are sand blasted or acid etched. You can have decorations with acid etching also. So you can create some pattern on top of this glass, you can generate some particular aesthetically pleasing looks on top of this glass by creating portions of it as ground glass or translucent and portions of it may be, may be transparent. Let us move to another type of glass which is laminated glass. Now what happens in the previous one? Here also if this breaks, it breaks like similar to plate glass. When it is laminated glass, we call it laminated because there is an intermediate lamina in between two glass sheets. So you are having two glass sheets and an intermediate layer which is particularly polyvinyl butyryl or PVB which is tough and resilient and also transparent to hold the two glass pieces together. So when these two glass pieces are together, no one can understand what is in between and this gives the beauty whenever if it is actually breaking, it is impacted by something, it will not fall. It will stick to the PVB or the lamina which is in between the two sheets. It will block the ultraviolet radiation. This interlayer allows to block the ultraviolet radiation and this is also sound proof. You will see these glass mostly in vehicle automobile industry. But yes, we also use it in our building domain when we are going for high rise application where from these glasses are entrapping lot of solar energy. Instead, we put it here so that the UV rays are cut down particularly public buildings you can see, high rise residences you can see. So the good point of this is it will not break, it cuts down the ultraviolet radiation. So considering these two uses, you can these two properties you can make use of it in the building. Now the other is colored glass which I have told you several times, it is due to the addition of different metal oxide powders in molten glass. So you have to plan for it. So when it is being made, you have to put that particular metal oxide in the mix. 
in the viscous liquid so that it forms that forms that color. So, this is a very old building taken from the rose window of church where we find lot of application of this colored glass. So, this is not a very new thing. Here again in a very modern building you can see this facade is entirely made of colored glass that is emphasizing the entry. So, here you see the list of colorants and the color it gives iron oxides ferrous and ferric giving green and brown as I told you green is always there naturally occurring glass naturally occurring in the sand and it gives that greenish tint. Magnesium oxide gives deep yellow color like amethyst, cobalt gives deep blue, gold chloride gives ruby, ruby red, selenium compounds give reds, carbon oxides give, give amber brown and you can go to the list. Tin compounds give white. So, here is the list of colors and the coloring agents most of them are metal oxides and you are actually metal oxide, metal chlorides. So, you are adding these in the during the melting process to get this colored glass. We have another type of glass tinted glass already there is a sheet glass wall you can stick something on top of it. It is an additional plastic layer on top of float glass or plate glass to make it translucent. So, nothing had been planned see nothing had been planned here these are stuck on top of it according to the pattern they wanted and they have created this kind of pattern on the facade. So, it obviously because the plastic layer is there it will absorb a portion of solar heat and block some amount of daylight. So, 100 percent daylight would not enter from indoor one can see the outside, but not from outdoor at daytime and at nights it is very difficult to see through it both ways. So, in indoor one can see the outside, but not from out, outdoor at daytime means this kind of tinted glass provides privacy. Appearance obviously depends on the color of the coating or the plastic sheet on top of it. Here you see you can cleverly do some corrections. You can provide metallic films like silvered film which will block 80 percent of ultraviolet rays. So, if it happens that a lot of radiation is being allowed, lot of heat is being generated actually you can put a tint on the glass surface and you can actually improve the energy or improve the performance of the building. So, this kind of film which will reflect out the solar radiation would be suggested if it is actually not being if the glass is creating any kind of inefficiency. Glass may be made fragile proof just by adding this film. So, if you if there is a fear of that this wall can this layer can, this glass can be break, can break due to some sudden heating you can protect it by applying a tint. Graphic patterns may be developed because you may have a building with a monotonous glass facade you can create with different types of tint some graphic patterns and obviously as I told you film may be reflective coating also. Again certain tints particularly if you see certain tints are there certain sheets are there which are spectrally selective tints. So, it will actually not allow a particular wavelength of solar radiation inside the space. So, they will absorb the near infrared rays. So, this will also ensure that near infrared rays are not entering the building. So, this is a kind of protective coating. You are protecting the inside from outside particularly the solar radiation and you can block it to about 
80 percent of the ultraviolet ray, you can absorb the near infrared ray and do spectral selective light to enter inside the daylight to enter inside the facility. Now, after finishing off with uh, different types of glass which we may get with the float glass or the plate glass or maybe the sheet glass, we come to another variety of glass, a showroom wall showroom entry, it is all glass, even at night it is kept all glass and you have a visible more or less transparent uh, rolling shutter. So, any time there may be a burglary there, it may be a jewelry shop, it may be an automobile shop. So, do the people sit on by putting such glass facade and can have a good sleep? No they know that their glass will give them the protection. These are at least 3 to 5 times strength wise better than ordinary glass. How? By the process of annealing. What is annealing? Annealing is heating and then cooling very gradually which will change its hardness, strength as well as ductility. As you can see here, it is before cooling, it is hot. Immediately when the cooling starts, the surface is getting cooler, but the inside remains still hot. And when further cooled, the upper surfaces are getting closer, they are getting compressed, whereas the inside is still in its liquid form. So, the formation of the amorphous substance keeps on is different. On the upper layer, it is the amorphous form is different than what is happening inside. This cooling, sudden cooling keeps on changing this pattern or the formation of the glass and heat resistance of such kind of glass is at least two times higher than that of ordinary glass. Glass in this case as you had seen in the others that you can shape the glass, you can drill the glass, you can cut the glass, you can weld the glass, but here in case of tempered glass you cannot do any such operation. Whatever drilling, whatever holes you require, whatever cutting needs to be done has to be done when it is in the formation stage. So, any hole to be made should be made before tempering. Any kind of shaping, any kind of holes that are required for any kind of attachment, any kind of screws has to be done when it is in its float glass stage. So, tempered glass is not nothing but treated float glass by the process of annealing where it gains strength, it gains heat resistance and obviously it is more preferred for buildings like shop windows, showrooms, shelves that will take load, facade, entry facades etcetera. It is expensive and the most important point is it will crumble into pieces like pieces of sugar. There is no edge to each of these pieces. So, even if it is so strong, but if it fails, the nature of its breaking is like sugar pieces as you can see in the picture. So, that is the other advantage of this kind of glass and you can understand it is mostly used where you are replacing it by the wall. Next is switchable colored glass which we call also as smart glass. Here if you have traveled by a plane, aeroplane, nowadays in some of the flights you can see as it you are flying at a high altitude, you are not liking the sun rays to come in. You can actually push the button and you can change the color of the glass. Even some people have photochromatic glasses. 
some of you may have your spectacles. This is an emerging technology where transparency level of the glass can be altered from transparent to translucent to blocking. This is done by cutting down some of the wavelengths of light and how it is done? It is the liquid crystal switchable coating which is bonded directly with this toughened glass or the tempered glass and it will allow you to keep on changing the transparency level time to time. Hence, this is also called as smart glass. This saves energy costs for heating or cooling whichever is the requirement and you can actually change the amount of sun rays to be filtered inside the space. I keep aside the hydrophilic and hydrophobic glass which I had listed in the types of glass in my first lecture and that I will expose to you little later. Now you see this switchable colored glass application in the Taipei 101 building. Here the vast expanse of glass you can see as you can see is having this kind of coating which actually helps in saving a lot lot of energy by changing its changing its allowance to the solar radiation inside the building. We have glass blocks which is again another application of tempered glass when two pieces of tempered glass molded out are joined together are pressed together you can see you will get a block of glass and when you are doing so inside it lot of air is entrapped so that acts as an insulator also so though even though it is glass you cannot see from this side to the other side and this gives a visual visual obscure area you cannot see what is happening inside and at the same time it will admit some portion of light so this is again another application of tempered glass being converted into such glass blocks and they are actually fixed together that we will discuss later. So, what we understood in this lecture is that there are several types of glass and they have variety of its uses. Strength of glass can be altered by heat treatment. Different kinds of glasses can be obtained by putting lamina, putting tint on top of it and creating different graphics on top of it. Fragility of glass and subsequent safety is the key issue which can be solved by putting this tint. Glass can be used in block forms also. With this I end today's lecture and we will move on to the third lecture which where we will see how to fix glass in a system. Thank you.